So you want to use a really fancy studio mic and a mixer with your ham radio station, but you're not sure how to do it. Well, stay tuned. I'll show you how. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie with me, Keith. So, let's look at this problem that we've got of putting our studio mic straight into our amateur radio equipment. The first thing is, you'll notice that the connections on your microphone probably don't look like those on the front of the radio. And that's because most radios have what's known as an unbalanced input. As you can see in this diagram, they're all much the same. They all contain one signal lead coming in from the mic and a ground which causes the audio circuit. When you press the PTT, the transmitter goes into transmit and the audio is transmitted. Now, there are other sorts of unbalanced inputs. As we can see here, this one's known as a tip sleeve or a TS mono. It has a sleeve and a tip. These aren't generally found on amateur radio equipment today, but they're quite common on older sets. So let's look at this unbalanced signal. Coming from the microphone, your audio travels along the signal line to the input of the radio. And it's a relatively low signal level, and therefore it has to be amplified in the transmitter by a preamp. As the signal goes along the signal line, any noise that arrives at the radio on that signal line will also be amplified by the preamp and therefore you can pick up noise with your signal when you transmit. However, to minimise this we use shielded cable and also short microphone cables to help get rid of it. Now, unlike amateur radio equipment, professional equipment tends to use what's known as a balanced input. And this is the connector that you'll normally find, an XLR connector, on the back of the microphone that you're wanting to use. It contains two signal leads and a ground. However, the ground lead only serves to ground the equipment and there is no signal present on that lead at all. You'll also notice that in a similar way to the TS connector, there's a balanced connector, which is a TRS standing for tip, ring and sleeve. As you can see, it's got two signal leads, as in the ring and the tip, and the ground, as in the sleeve. So let's look at this balanced signal. As you'll see in this diagram, from the source, as in the microphone, the positive and negative signal leads take audio into the input of the radio. As before, any noise that is picked up on those two lines can be transferred into the transmitter. The only difference is you'll notice that the plus and the minus signals are out of phase with each other. And therefore, any noise that's collected will be cancelled out as it reaches the transmitter. You may ask, well why don't we use balanced inputs on our radios? The answer is it mainly comes down to money. So, how do we get our balanced microphone into our unbalanced radio? What we need to do is we need to wire it up like this. The source, being the microphone, has the three wires coming out, the two signal and the one ground. And what we do is we ground out the negative wire to the ground at the input of the radio. Now a word of warning, if you've got an ICOM radio, on the audio input line, the positive, you must put a 1 microfarad non-polarised, if possible, capacitor. The reason for this is that ICOM send around about 8 volts from the radio down that signal line to power a condenser microphone. As we're not using a condenser microphone, it's best to block that in this situation. So what if you want to use a mixer as well? Well, let's just look at a typical mixer. This is a Bowring, a very, very popular mixer. It has, at the top, two balanced inputs in the form of XLR connectors. And let's just look at one of those. The input comes in. It then goes down a audio channel strip. This allows you to alter the high, 
mid and low frequencies there's also a fade and at the bottom is a level control moving across to the right is the mic level output and that will come out of the unbalanced mic output to the radio unfortunately audio from mixers to transmitters will be far too loud and due to this you'll get distortion at the radio the way to resolve this is not by generally lowering the output controls on the mixer you'll still possibly get hum and distortion what you need to do is you'll need initially to add a 60 to 1 kilo ohm resistor on the positive line this is what's known as padding and it pads the audio down but to achieve this the best thing to do is use a potentiometer or a variable resistor and this way you can alter the output to get the best signal that you can from your microphone now one of the unfortunate side effects of all of this is that you may end up with hum and the way to remove any hum is by using a 600 to 600 transformer this audio transformer and variable resistor will mean that you've isolated your source from your radio and hopefully the hum will disappear however if hum is still present then this may be due to a ground loop and the way to deal with this is by disconnecting the ground from the mic input at the mic plug now to do this properly only requires a few parts and this is the parts once again a 600 to 600 audio transformer a 1k ohm resistor and the one microfarad capacitor non polarized if possible if you've got an icom radio now the only other items that you're going to require are some xlr connectors for your microphone and a suitable microphone connector for your radio but let's not forget cable for cable i suggest using van dam xke star quad 4 this is the tour classic type of cable it's used extensively within the audio industry and that's because this is particularly good at blocking out interference as you'll see it does have four cables two white two blue plus the silver braid don't be put off by the fact that there's four cables in here what you need to do to use these is wire it as we've seen in the picture on the right joining the two white and the two blue together this cable is particularly good because it's twisted inside which also helps block any unwanted interference so lastly what are we going to do about keying up and transmitting well for this your radio may have a vox or a voice operated switch employing this means that every time you talk the transmitter will transmit this is fine unless you're in a noisy environment whereby every noise that's made then puts the radio in to transmit an alternative is to use a mock switch and you may find this on your radio which is a manually operated switch and by pressing this it will put your transmitter into transmit and then pushing it again will put it into receive finally the one that i normally go for is a momentary ptt or push to talk switch this is operated by a simple plunger which shorts out the ground and the positive on the ptt and by doing this every time you push the switch it makes contact and therefore the radio goes into transmit and ladies and gentlemen that's how you wire up a professional mic to your ham radio setup either directly or through a mixer i hope that's given you the knowledge you were looking for if it has consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell and if i've not sent you to sleep by now how about giving us a thumbs up if you think i've deserved it it lets me know i'm doing something right so my name's keith my call sign is g0fea and i'm the ham radio junkie i'll catch you next time